that's a phrase nobody really wants to hear uttered every year if you're honest with yourself. And well, it happened this week, and here it is. I hereby call the first regular session of the House of Representatives for the 57th Oklahoma Legislature to order. Wow. They're back. And who was that in the chair, Representative Dunnington? It, it's uh, a colleague of ours that's with us this morning. Representative West, Me. good to have you here. Yes, thank All you right. for being here. There she was. She was gaveling in the session. Hey, let me ask you this, Representative Dunnington. Any clues as to how this session might go based upon what happened that day? Yeah, organizational day is something that only happens once every two years. So this will be the first year of the uh, 57th legislature. So we just finished up the 56th. They go on a two-year cycle. And so what, what we did on organizational day is really kind of the minutia of what takes place that allows us to do the business of the House and of the Senate. We voted on rules. We uh, got set up in offices. We elected new leaders uh, for the floor, for the Senate. Uh, we elect re-elected uh, Speaker McCall and Pro Tem Treat. Um, these are all the things that need to happen for us to, to be able to be effective once we start in February. So really ran smoothly and, um, you know, I think is a, is a good indication of us getting started off on the right foot. Representative West, you were right there in that chair in the yes. power chair watching all this. Any clues to how, how this session is going to go? Well, it was an honor, first and foremost, let me say, of one of those moments where you just almost can't believe that you're sitting there doing it. But it, it did run very, very smoothly. There was a great deal of respect shown on the floor. There was a lot of unity. We got a lot of the basic work done, and it went uh, quickly. Uh, I think everybody was impressed that we were within two minutes of being exactly on our timetable getting things done. But as Representative Dunnington alluded to, we worked a lot on the rules. And we got them cleaned up, streamlined, so that things move quickly more smoothly on the floor and with less distraction. That's good for us on the floor doing the work, but it's also good for the citizens of Oklahoma. And no Facebook lives from the floor. That was an interesting uh, development. New rule. Yep. A new, new rule. rule, that's right. Um, media is obsessing about this next governor, as they should. we got to have a lot of stories about the incoming administration. But there are a lot of people that are in leadership in the House and the Senate that are going to have a big, as big an impact on this state moving forward as the next governor. You want to talk about a few of them? Yes. On the House side, we've got uh, Speaker McCall, and we have got Floor Leader Eccles, and then we have in our budget chair, Representative Wallace. And what's great about the leadership on the House side is all of these people have experience, and with almost 80% of the House having four years or less experience and 47 new members, the stability and the continuity that the leadership in the House brings with two years experience, and I will say two rough years that they've gotten under their belts is gonna be a big help. On the Senate side, um, Representative, or excuse me, Senator Treat and Kim David will be running the floor, and they were elected with a bipartisan, unanimous vote. I think that speaks very highly and as a great indication of the unity that's in the Senate already. Leadership on the Democrat side, make no mistake, there are a lot of rookies in there, so leadership's going to be much more powerful than in the past. Yeah, I mean, we've got great new leaders uh, on the Democratic side of the aisle. I mean, and this time, for the first time ever, we've got two females that are, are uh, running the show on the House and the Senate side with uh, Kay Floyd in the Senate, Emily Virgin uh, on, the, on the House side. Uh, I think what's important about uh, thinking about, you know, the governor and legislature is that the governor really uh, sets the tone a lot of what's going to happen in the state, uh, gets to talk about all the great things about the state, talk about the things that need to happen, need to change. But the legislature is really what the nuts and bolts. I mean, we build the budget, uh, we craft what we're going to spend money on, uh, we put all of those things together through uh, the process um, that's going to take place this spring, and the governor either gets to sign it or veto it and send it back to us. So really important stuff that takes place um, in the House and in the Senate uh, of state government uh, for our state. All right, state collections have been up, but everybody's looking at those old prices, they do all of this. Do you think we've learned, is the 2019 session 2019 legislature learned from the mistakes of the past. Well, I hope we've learned from the mistakes of the past. There's two good things here. Um, we're projecting about 13% higher in uh, tax revenues right now, which is great for the state. Uh, oil prices have rebounded and come back up to the uh, low 50s this last week, and that's also good for the state since we built a budget on about $53 a barrel oil. But we need to be very, very cautious about um, rushing to conclusions, cutting taxes again, pulling money out of this budget that really needs to stay in so we can continue to invest in the things that we care about the most. And I think we've got a really great group of legislators that see the importance of building for the future, and I hope that we've learned from mistakes of our past. You think we've learned from the past? 
Well, I think that we have. We went through a very rough two years, and we made some difficult decisions in the 56th legislature that have helped provide some stability, but this is the time for fiscal management and caution. We laid also some groundwork the last two years with regards to the performance audits so that when we go in, we're not just spending, but we are really targeting the reinvestment in our core services. And then also the groundwork was laid for the governor and the executive branch to have more oversight over the agencies. I think those were all things that we can put into place that are going to help us uh, avoid repeating the mistakes of the past. We have better oversight, efficiency, and we've got the revenue that I think that will attract business and help us diversify our economy, which basically is what's going to help us uh, avoid these pitfalls in the future, diversification. All right, real quick, last topic. There was a little bit of a surprise in Speaker McCall's speech the other day about what some of his priorities. Take a listen to this. We must continue to invest, increase teacher pay, and make Oklahoma school children the top priority. My goal is to make Oklahoma's teachers first in the region for pay. Well, Speaker West, a little bit of surprise to a lot of folks. Can we do it? Well, as you heard uh, Speaker McCall say, it is a priority. And I'll allude to the, the answer I just gave. We have revenue. We, have better, we will have better oversight. We have a prioritizing of investment in our core services, of, amongst which is education. So I think going forward that we put all of those things together and with the leadership that we have, I think that we will do it. Also though, I would like us to look at a long-term plan for education, similar to what we have with the uh, roads and bridges. That eight-year plan, not necessarily an eight-year plan, but we need to make sure that we are continuing to invest not only in salaries, but in the funding formula, so that we do not find ourselves in this place again, and we are regionally competitive. Can we and will we? Well, there are two things that uh, Speaker McCall said there, that uh, we need to invest more money in children uh, in schools, and he wanted to bring teacher pay to the highest in the region. Uh, I think those are two different things in many uh, respects, and both two very important things. One thing we definitely need to do now is to put more money in the classroom, lower class sizes, uh, make sure that kids are getting more per pupil uh, funding in their classrooms, and continue to work, take the next step on teacher pay. But two very important things that he said there, and uh, two things that I think you're going to find a legislature very willing to work on. Education's a very important thing for the vast majority of uh, members in the legislature, and something I think we're going to take a big swing at this year. Yes. All right, thank you both. Thanks for watching Your Vote Counts. See this again at News9.com. Com slash your vote counts and follow me, Scott Mitchell, on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.